watching everybody. How are we doing today? Good, good, good. If the youth, if, uh, if you could all come on up here. So we are extremely excited. You guys were gone, not this past Sunday, the Sunday before, is that correct? Two, two weeks ago? So um, I am, I'm extremely honored to be able to, oh, you're also up here. That's exciting. Half the worship team's staying up here. Um, we're going to hear some, uh, some testimony from, from the leaders of the youth trip this morning as well as some of the youth and in, in the, just the way that the Lord has impacted them. And then I would love, at the end of service today, uh, after they're done sharing, we're going to lay hands. We're going to do some impartation, if that sounds all right with all of you guys. We're excited for what it is that uh, the Lord deposited to them. Romans 1.11 says, For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts, so that you may be established. 2 Timothy 1.6 also says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. We're going to have the youth this morning actually lay hands on you and impart the spiritual gifts that they were able to receive uh, on their trip this last couple of weeks. So um, if Josh, if you want to start, we've got some hand signals going on. Are we all good? Oh yeah, come on up everybody. You guys can all pile together. Look at all these Great looking people up here. It's so exciting. All right, so this is Josh. Uh, him and his wife, Becca, who's, who just made her way up here, are leading our youth ministry. I'm going to let them share a little bit about the trip. Thank you. Such an honor. I, I, I can't help but uh, start off after, after that kind of worship. We're, we're here for one purpose, and that's to reveal Jesus the Christ and to unveil the face of Jesus to those around us. And we say, come and behold him, our king, our savior. And so that's the purpose. Um, will, will everyone here that's, that's 30 years old and younger stand up? <laughs> yes, that, you too, Kat, Pastor Kathy. <laughs> I've been hearing, I've been hearing the Holy Spirit say this is generation of John the Baptist. And this is what he says. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough ways smooth. I hear you, I hear him calling you to prepare the way before King Jesus, before our bridegroom comes, to make way, to make room, to make space, to prepare the bride. You, you may be seated, thank you. Uh, real quickly, I, I'll, I'll, this, this trip was, was amazing. We're actually missing seven, uh, seven more of our youth that are uh, uh, from the trip that we are currently on a vacation. Um, but I wanted to make mention of um, anyone here, give thanks, anyone here that donated uh, pop cans that we could go. I mean, seriously, that doesn't sound like a lot, but thank you. It was a big deal to us. It made a difference. Um, every single person that prayed for our trip, um, from uh, uh, Jim and, and Molly Stein that, that donated uh, for gas, uh, for the banisters that, that donated towards the vans and, and gas, for Ralph and Rose uh, uh, that donated uh, Lori and Pastor Kathy and anyone else that provided jobs for our youth to work to earn money for, for their own trip. I just, again, for, uh, for both Evans, Evans, Evans Stein and Evan Post that, that sacrificed and, and came down with the youth, yes. So this started uh, uh, two years ago. Um, we didn't. Uh, it was during during the pandemic. Uh, there, there wasn't youth, correct? There wasn't. So there wasn't junior high and high school. Uh, um, and uh, we brought our kids down to a camp, drove all the way down to Texas because we felt that that's what God was calling us to do. We had heard that the, there was powerful encounters with Jesus. And transforming lives. And so we, we brought our kids, exactly that happened. They encountered Jesus in a powerful way. Their lives were transformed and changed. And so the next year they told, uh, they told friends and we told um, uh, the youth that were in here, the Hillbrands and uh, let's see, the, the Weeks, uh, Crystal and Johnny. And we went back down again. Again, 
had encounters, mighty encounters with Jesus, and lives were changed and transformed. Um, and so all of them said, hey, we're going to tell our friends. And so uh, this time we had 15, seven of which are not even from, uh, from our church, just going because they're hungry to encounter Jesus. Uh, so last year we knew that them coming back, they were going to be hungry. And so we felt God calling uh, to disciple them um, into that they would know who God was to them in a relationship, that salvation is for a relationship with him, how to have that, and then how to hear from, uh, how to hear from the, the voice of God. Um, and then the next thing is, who am I? Uh, for them to know their, their identity as they receive their father's love, uh, that they receive their identity in him. Because then out of the overflow, then they would go into the third thing, and, and that is, what am I called to do? My purpose, the kingdom of God, administering the kingdom of God. So we, all, we had only started last uh, Labor Day and uh, started meeting, uh, sharing that. And we had only just got into ministering the kingdom of God. And so we felt God, as we were praying for this camp this year, we felt God doing two things. One is that he was going to fill them and flood them with his love, every, every spot, every area. And then the second thing is that out of the abundance, he was going to be using them to minister to the, those around them. Those that were like them the previous year that, that were needing insecure and um, needing identity and things. So that's exactly what happened. So this, uh, the first night we, we had, uh, the, the message was God's love. And then the prayer was, Jesus, fill every area, fill every spot in my life. And then they had us minister to the youth, and, and everyone was hungry. Everyone was going forward. Second night was on, the word was on forgiveness and releasing people that you had bitterness and unforgiveness and that was having a hold over your life and, and needing healing from. And so that was envision, envision yourself untying the bonds and the straps. And as we went back as, as a youth group and kind of shared testimonies, there was, there was one girl to the side, had her head down and, and she was frozen and clenched. And so the Holy Spirit kept on pointing out and, and the girls and, and Becca and I went over and uh, the, the girls were amazing. All they were doing is speaking words of life and healing over her. And at first she didn't want to release and let go. And then we asked, hey, what, you know, what is this doing to you? Is it depression? Is it, is it fear, anxiety, stress, and worry? She said, yes. And do you, want to, do you want to hold that? Do you want to deal with that anymore? No. Then let's go after it. Let's go after it. And her face went from, from just straight and stern to, to completely being changed. The joy of the Lord, uh, the, the love of God in her face glowed because of forgiveness and healing and Jesus coming in. And she went right in with uh, well, all the rest of us and, and into worship and, and uh, dancing and going after God. Uh, the third night was repentance and confessing, not just confessing sins, but it was confessing temptation. Confessing temptation. Because previous to the sin, if you're able to confess to one another temptations, then you're able to overcome and, and potentially uh, avert walking in sin altogether. And because of that, because of that repentance and because of that confessing, the Holy Spirit came down on, on all of the youth. There was about 400 youth. And every single night at worship, they were all pressing in, all pressing in, going after and hungry. And so the Holy Spirit came on in a, in a, in a powerful way. And some of them had never experienced God's presence like that, had never experienced the infilling of the Holy Spirit that way. So much so that they had an impromptu baptism in the lake the next morning. Yeah. So 100 out of the 385, four, so out of the 385, almost 400, uh, there were 100 youth, and then there were some counselors and staff that also wanted to uh, get baptized too. There was such a presence of the wooing of the Holy Spirit to come in. Like you couldn't, you couldn't help it. It was like if you saw the movie Jesus Revolution, you couldn't help it. Man, I'm, I'm in love with Jesus, and then I want to just want to proclaim it and declare it. And every area, every spot, fill it, God, it's yours. Here it is. So 100 baptisms. 
on the way there and on the way home, there was opportunities. You would, you would have been amazed and applauding them. They were in the gas stations, in the restaurants. Uh, on the way back, there was a, a gentleman with a blown tire, and it was 100 and some degrees, and we almost kept on going, but the Holy Spirit said go, and so we quick turned off. Turns out he was a pastor's kid and not serving the Lord, not walking with him. We were able to pray with him. And then because we stopped, a serviceman that's kind of like a AAA guy came in at the end. He said, I've got an impact drill and wrench. This will make it way faster for you. Prayed with him. He gave us all ice waters and ice gatorades. The, the, the young men were getting out and saying, what can I do? How can I help? They were laying hands on the knees and praying. Uh, it was, it's, it's just amazing. And, and there's so many more stories. And... I'm going to turn it over to uh, one of the counselors. I will hold this. Uh, Come on up here. Who's next? Are you next? You want us to share? Yeah, I I wasn't going to because I was going to let them have time. There's time. Oh, you're going to hold it. I'll be really short. I promise. There's a power button on the bottom of this, so if you see me fiddling around, that means that it times up. Um, I was going to give them time, but uh, I didn't really plan anything. I highlighted the trip. Just God's presence was so manifest in those worship services, and actually the whole week, I, um, he has more than enough for all of us, and I had prayed, you know, for weeks for this trip, and actually through the whole year, and so many people were praying, and um, I just saw God do some amazing things in the kit, in their hearts of the youth, um, so much change, overnight, um, forgiveness, letting go of um, stress and just anxiety and letting the, the countenance of, of every youth was different, different the next day after this happened. And I just remember, I, you know, as the presence of God was coming on me in the worship service, and I wanted to share this with everybody because this has to do with y'all, is that I was like, God, why are you so good to me? You're so good to me. Why, why are you so good to me? And he said it was, he just, it was, it was simple. He said it's because you're my daughter. And he's, he has so much love for all of us. And I was one of the ones that got in the lake. I was going to say the nasty lake. <laughs> the tank. Yes, it wasn't as clean as others. but, And I just, it was just amazing when I came up. I was ugly crying, and I was just like, this is it. I'm walking into the next chapter of my life, and I'm just, I'm so excited. Amen. It wasn't as clean because everybody's washing their sin off in it. Let's uh, let's do the, let's do the teachers first, and then we're going to move to the youth at the end because they're going to be the ones praying. Oh, okay, sweet. So, highlight of the trip was seeing so many teenagers hungry for Jesus. I work in a Christian school. I I lead the discipleship program for our middle school. And uh, I had been hardened by that. And I had grown cynical. I had let cynicism come in. And seeing these kids press in, like first day. Jesus did this last year, and I'm so excited for what he's going to do this year. I'm like, are you kidding me? Um, And seeing them go after Jesus and worship and praise and, and minister to one another set me free, and humbled me tremendously. Holy smokes. Holy ghost. Holy ghost, yeah. Yeah. So, oh my word. Get rid of cynicism. Yeah, come on. Come like a child. Get rid of it. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Amen. Did you have anything you want to share? Come on up. Come on down. Look at them all cheering you on. So um, on, the, on the second to last day after the baptisms, we had outdoor chapel, and I, I felt the wind begin to blow, and it, it shifted direction and started blowing from behind me, and I felt it in my spirit like it was a tailwind, and it wasn't just like for me. It was for all these guys and all of us to bring it back here for you guys. And um, that was amazing. And then on their way home, right after 
um, all the boys were in the car, and we had a little impromptu worship set, and the glory just absolutely filled the car just with these, like, 12-year-old kids doing their thing, and it was, like, phenomenal to, to be a part of and to witness and to know that they're going to bring that back to the schools and to the communities and release everything uh, that they took in. And it was just amazing to see all of that, not just in our kids, but also in the 300 other kids at the camp. Amen. It's good. Thank you. Spoiler alert, the same Holy Spirit lives in these guys and what, what it lives in all of us. Wow. I just really quick want to um, just honor the leaders for going down there for taking time. I mean, these people had sacrificed their time to light our kids on fire. Like that is huge. So it's, it's amazing. Really, really awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, who, uh, who is prepared to share? Who wants to go first? Who's the brave one? You ready? Come on up here. Uh, name and a uh, little bit of highlights and whatever else you wanted to prepare. Remember, I will turn the mic off if it gets wild. Okay, no, I don't have much. Hello, my name is Christian, and uh, I just want to start out the first day. It was incredible. Usually people on the first day of camp are, like, awkward. They're set settling in, getting to know each other, but... This year was different. Instead, they uh, they they pushed, they they pressed to to praise, to worship, um, because they were so hungry, so desperate for the Lord, and it was incredible. Um, then Wednesday, we just confessed sins. Everyone was getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was incredible. My friends were crying. Um, Two kids, new kids, had been um, touched by the Holy Spirit for the first time, which is incredible. And then uh, for baptisms, almost all of our youth went there, even though they weren't considering to the day before, but they all got baptized. Amen. Amen. So good. So good. So good. Who's next? Hi everyone, my name is Amber and on the way down I had pretty bad stomach pain and when we got to church on Sunday and uh, during worship I just felt at complete peace and um, the pastor asked anybody that needed healing to stand up and I stood up and the youth and the leaders laid their hands on me and instantly the pain just went away and um, I was able to enjoy a meal and actually down my food which was, which was amazing. Um, and the first day at camp, it was just so awesome seeing everybody just press in to uh, the Holy Spirit. And um, I was just felt at complete peace during worship and had a vision of just my friends and I and Jesus just dancing in the rain in complete freedom. And it was just absolutely amazing um, to see. And the second night was on forgiveness. And I knew that I needed to forgive somebody that just gave me so much anger um, this person hurt my friends and um, just gave me a lot of anger with the situation that's going on in my life right now. And um, it was super cool um, the way that we did it. Uh, the person that I was forgiving, their hands were tied. And um, they were just saying to me, I'm sorry. And I just said back to them, God loves you and I love you. And um, I was bawling my eyes out. Um, and it was super hard for me. But after I forgave this person, I just felt at complete peace. And um, I just kept speaking truth over them. And um, the third night was on uh, confessions. And I went up there and I confessed something that has been affecting my life for over three years. And they prayed over me. And my mind just shifted from that situation onto his truth and what his truth is for me. And it was absolutely amazing. And um, that night, we... Uh, were told that they were going to do baptisms after five years, and I just said, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it again, and um, I got baptized the next day in the lake that was, <laughs> um, but just after being baptized, I was just at complete peace and knowing that I am his, and um, I just can't wait for next year. It's going to be awesome. Hey, would you mind, are you comfortable playing? Um, for forgiveness, I'll, I'll say something to them. Would you be comfortable with that? 
Yeah. Um, so something that just that keeps getting spoken about that's just really sticking out to me right now is the power of forgiveness. And with the breakthrough that she received while she was down there for uh, to be able to forgive, I, I really feel it strongly in this room of just that there is an anointing present right now for just a release of forgiveness. Um, you know, uh, forgiveness, uh, oftentimes we're, we're waiting for somebody to right their wrongs. And we're forgetting that the entire point of the cross is that when we were yet sinners, he died for us. He forgave us before we righted our wrongs. And we don't get to just receive that from him and then get to live according to our old way of living. But we also, because we've received from him unconditional love and forgiveness, it is our uh, responsibility as people made in his image to forgive those that have done us wrong. And so I just want to, I would love for you to pray for that, just for people to be able to release forgiveness for those that have done wrongs, regardless of whether or not they've made it right with them. So, Father God, I just pray for peace over anybody that is wanting to forgive anybody, just strength to do it, and just comfort, Lord. I pray that all the anger, frustration would just go away in the name of Jesus, Father God, and that you would just overflow them with peace and overflow the person that they are forgiving with peace, comfort, and strength, Father God. Just thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. 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 If you're feeling the Lord move in your heart, I would love for you just to raise your raise wave your hand through that if you're feeling something. Come on, look at that. How cool is that? That is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? You're right. All right. Just introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Aveda. I am Josh's niece. Um, and and Becca's, and Becca's, can't forget her, <laughs> and my grandma Becky, woo, <laughs> woo! <laughs> and grandpa, and grandpa, and grandpa. Go oh, gra yeah, grandpa. okay, right. that's Here's mom, yeah, just everybody, <laughs> um, These are pastors up here. yeah, I just love it, yeah, <laughs> um, God was just teaching me a lot, um, throughout those days, um, I, it was my first year this year, and um, I was just coming in and expecting a lot, like, this is going to be great, you know, I'm going to be changed, um, and it, we come in um, to this building, and everybody's so hyped, and, um, and I was just kind of standing back and seeing everybody go up. I was like, oh, well, I guess I should go, too. <laughs> no. But, um, and something that God was teaching me was um, just being still in his presence. Yeah. And I feel like um, I was really good on feeling, you know, and I, and I thought that if I didn't feel him, then he's not there. And something that... Um, that happened was one of the nights um, we were worshiping and I didn't feel him, you know. And I was asking God, like, why? Why, why don't I feel you right now? I go on my knees with my hands up um, and uh, I close my eyes and I see Jesus right in front of me. Yeah. He's walking towards me with his hands just pushing out like that. And I felt weight just lifted off of me. He puts his hands on my head and says, here I am. And um, one of my favorite verses is Revelations 3.20 and, and it starts with, here I am. Um, and that, that taught me um, that he is worthy of our praise and he is love, he is joy and he's peace and patience and all that. And even if we don't feel him, doesn't mean that he's not there, Amen. that he is still faithful. Um, and that's something that I needed reassurance on. Um, just being thankful for him uh, equipping me from where I was and where I am now. Um, and that there are going to be 
seasons in my life that are going to feel dry and still, but still thanking him and praising him and worshiping him and, and remembering where I came and where I am now. Do you mind praying also? So Jesus said for us to enter into the kingdom of heaven, we need to become like children. And uh, I would love for you just to pray for childlike faith, that, that, that we would become like children and see Jesus for who he truly is. Get rid of all the religiosity in our minds, all of the ideas of who men say that, that he is, but that we would see him face to face in the same way that you just experienced him. Yeah. God, we just lift you up right now, and we thank you for you being faithful and worthy of our praise. Lord, I just pray that you will completely renew us, that we will have a mind like your children, God, that we will walk faithfully and humbly. Lord, I just pray that you will strengthen us, that we will be able to walk in seasons that feel still and dry, but that you are still there. Lord, show us your faithfulness and your goodness so that we can overcome trials in our life that might seem difficult but that you are still there, Lord. I just pray that you will come into us, teach us, Lord, that we will understand your personality and who you are, that we will feel your love and your presence throughout every single day, that you will just guide us and give us wisdom throughout what you have in our life and the plans or that we know that that's way better than what we have in store for us. Lord, I just pray that we will live for you, God. That we will experience who you are and your personality. That it's more than being a Christian. It's having a relationship with you and a friendship. Amen. Amen. Woo, come on. That was so good. All right, does anybody else have anything that you guys prepared? Anybody else want to share? <laughs> anybody? Good? We're good? Do you want to share? Do you want to share? Sure. All right, here we go. Just a highlight from your week. Um, yeah, so I've been gone for a while in a, in a different season in Palestine just because that's where God was leading me. And uh, this week during camp, it was just, it was so special just being in his presence. And I was a camp counselor this year instead of a camper. And so that was, you know, I had the the honor of, you know, leading a few kids into the presence of the Lord. And just, you know, one thing, all the counselors were praying beforehand before all the campers came to the camp. And... One thing the Lord brought um, for a lot of my campers, he said, they are my treasure. You know, they're mine. So there was a real, like, fire that just came up, like, from from the beginning. And just, and I got to see kids who, you know, probably didn't have great father figures or who, who didn't even have father figures. A lot of stepfathers and stuff like that. Just be able to know God as the father and just go into that. And that was, that was such a blessing. So that was a huge highlight. And even for me, uh, on Thursday, that's when they were doing the water of baptisms, as you heard about from the other, uh, kids and campers. And that was just, my mom got baptized and, um, I got rebaptized as well. And it was just, I, I walked back from it and God was like, you are a child of God. And that was, that was probably the biggest highlight, I would say. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's so good. You want to hold it? No, you can go ahead because I'm going to look up the scripture real quick. Okay. Um, I have one, one uh, young, young lady that was not able to uh, attend today, Chloe Bannister. Um, that had her life changed there as well. She sent in her testimony for, for me to read it um, in her handwriting. So, um, I'm going to do this number. Uh, My camp testimony. The night before camp, uh, Josh was talking about God knocking at the door waiting for us to open it. 
So then the first night, the pastor talked about opening our hearts to God. I opened my heart. Yeah. 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 Exactly, yeah. Yeah. I opened my heart to God, and I just felt my heart completely open to him. Then they had all these adults come around and were praying over us. I so happened to be wearing my missions trip shirt. She was praying and telling me God was calling me into missions. I had been talking about how I wanted to be a missionary for a couple of months, and that day I knew God was calling me into missions. I couldn't stop crying like I'm doing right now. (laughs) I couldn't stop crying. I was just so filled with the Holy Spirit. The next morning we had quiet time and I was asking God what I should read and I saw this ant. (laughs) So I started playing with it. (laughs) And it and it really loved this one sticker on my water bottle. (laughs) However God speaks, right? (laughs) It was my sticker for sharing the gospel. Next page. And God brought me to Genesis chapter 1, where God created the world and created the animals. The second to last day, I was baptized for the second time. And Aveda said to me, I will do it if you do it. I just remember where I was feeling the Holy Spirit saying, go. So I went and was baptized in what we called the poo water. (laughs) 